Hello everyone, this is Coach Robert with another tactics video. Today I'm going to be ranking the various checkmating patterns that have names. All of the named checkmates are ones that occur frequently in practice, so these are ones that could happen in your own games. If you want to follow along and solve them as tactics puzzles, you can just pause at the beginning of each position before I explain uh, my rationale for ranking them the way that I did. I broke everything up into four, uh, I'm sorry, six tiers, and uh, I had four criterion for uh, ranking them, and the ones that are ranked uh, like in the first place are the ones that are more frequent, simpler to implement, more essential as a building block for other checkmates, or uh, more likely to be the only way to win a given position. So let's get started. I'll be explaining um, how you solve the position and also what the name of the position is. If you're interested in the history of the name of the, the checkmating pattern, you can go to Wikipedia. There's a pretty comprehensive list of checkmating patterns there, and um, I have, haven't included any that are not available there. So, this first one's called Queen Mate, pretty obvious. I consider this one into the first rank because I've seen so many people um, struggling to checkmate with a king and a queen, and you need to know what your target position is. Um, by the way, these are all checkmating patterns, so that doesn't mean that this checkmate will happen exactly as you see it. Chess is not a memorization game. I think it's really important to understand that some problems have to be solved more or less by brute force. Like, you have to just work really hard, um, look at a lot of options, and solve it. And some positions you can solve just because you've seen them already in a similar situation. So, instead of seeing this just as a position that could happen the way you see it, you could imagine that maybe other pieces are involved. You know, this queen mate could happen either with the king and the queen by themselves, like I just mentioned, or it could happen with uh, many pieces on the board, although I find it unlikely that the king will be this close um, if there are lots of pieces. So this is mostly like what happens when maybe you promote a pawn, which is a pretty common situation. So the checkmate will happen like this. That's our classic queen mate. And there's, there's another way that you can do it in one move. But this one bears a similarity to um, another checkmate that we'll see later with just the rook. So this is really our queen mate. So this isn't the first tier, and the next few are also in the first tier, which I consider most important. This one's called Damiano's bishop mate, and if you have seen this kind of thing before, you might recognize it um, by its similar, similar name of scholar's mate. So the, the general name is Damiano's bishop mate, and the scholar's mate is a very particular version. But I did have scholar's mate in mind when I ranked this one in the first category. Scholar's mate is the number one way that people lose to their dad, so you need to kind of remember this. I mean, you can lose to other people like that, but you know, a lot of people, when, when they're first learning, the person who teaches them, which might be like a family member or a close friend, um, or a coach, they will often checkmate them just like this. They'll have a bishop somewhere on the board attacking right in front of the king, and then the queen goes right in front. So this is very similar to the, the queen mate. Um, in fact, a lot of the, f the, f the tier one checkmates are with a queen, because I consider it easier to checkmate the queen in general for a starting player. This one's with black to play. I might have left this with white to play by accident. Um, so this one is also very common. In fact, it happens in the opening. You'll notice that I didn't rank them by simplicity in terms of number of pieces. I rank them according to um, their simplicity to execute and their, their frequency. It's very common that people will start the game with moves like f3 and g4. I didn't put these pawns in just to keep it very general. But, you know, once they move those pawns and they've left everything else the way they are, checkmate can easily happen like this. Yeah, I did leave this as white to play. Um, hold on, let me do a little trick to make this. Alright, now it's black to play. And you can checkmate actually on g3 or h4, which just goes to show that this is really a pattern. There's multiple ways to execute the same idea, depending on the particulars. Back rank mate re requires a lot of cooperation from the opponent. That's actually another factor that I included. If your opponent has to cooperate a lot um, for the checkmate to happen, I generally ranked it um, into a, a category like closer to six. Um, but this one is just so common. It's so common that you can accidentally checkmate someone like this. This is the back rank mate. You really need to know this one. Whenever the king is blocked by their own pieces, and there's no one who can come back and block here or here, then you're going to get your back rank checkmate. There are variations upon it, since you know this is a pattern, right? The pawns could be here, but there could be a bishop controlling that square, so use your imagination. 
I mostly want to stimulate your imagination by showing you all these checkmates. It's not something to memorize, it's something to keep in mind to inspire you in your games. This one is also one of the most famous, um, and it has a really funny name in my opinion, so I maybe ranked it a little bit more highly just because I like its name. So the original name is Ladder Checkmate, um, but I've also seen it called Lawnmower Checkmate or Rook Roller Checkmate. I like Lawnmower Checkmate because I like to imagine that the rooks are lawnmowers and they're chasing this king and there's this perverse situation in which the king is trying to get is about to get mowed over by these rooks. So it's called Ladder Checkmate or whatever you like because um, it looks like the rooks are climbing a ladder when they execute this properly. So the first move will be like this and they'll probably start running towards the rooks to try to be uncooperative, but here, since they don't have a lot of room to get closer to the rooks, it's a very simple checkmate. So that's our ladder checkmate. And there are variations upon it that depend on how close the king is and what pieces are on the board, but you, you get the picture. You can do this with any two heavy pieces. Two queens, two rooks, rook and a queen, whatever you like. Okay, this one I included in the first tier um, because I've seen a lot of situations in which people get stalemate. If you don't know what stalemate is, you should probably Google that. Um, there are a lot of videos about what stalemate is and how to avoid it and so on. Um, I might make a video about how to purposely get stalemate since that seems to be something I do a lot. Um, so the kill box mate is a situation where I've seen people get very close to the checkmate but stalemate. So I think this is essential to move out of the like beginner category into an intermediate category. You need to not get a stalemate in situations like this. And part of why people have a hard time with this checkmate, even though um, it's relatively simple, is they 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 have like a latent fear of getting close to their enemy's pieces, so they'll think about what what can I do with this rook or what can I do with this queen, and they'll get anxious about putting it near. But the way that you win this position is with this this move. This is the checkmate. This is your kill box mate. That's the box. Well, sort of. Yeah. So there you go. That's how it works. The rook and the queen cooperate very well together. This is not the same as a ladder mate with a rook and a queen because they're not doing this like stepping over each other or stepping past each other thing. It's just the queen's giving support and simultaneously building a barrier. Definitely a tier one thing, you need to know that. This one's called Balestra Mate. Let's be real, no chess player knows that this is called Balestra Mate. Um, but it's important nevertheless because it's sort of similar to the kill box mate um, in the respect that the queen is building this barrier and these are the only two squares safe for the king. It would be a shame if something happened to it, right? So you have to play this move and finish it off. So now they're all cooperating very nicely. Um, I consider these checkmates essential because uh, the kill box and the balestra mate, because if you are in a situation where you have somehow earned the, the mighty right to having a bishop and a queen over their king, it's easy to stalemate if you don't know what you're going for. You need to go for a position like this. I mean, you could also try to convert this into like a Damiano mate, Damiano's bishop mate, where the bishop's supporting the queen, but that might be even more work than just finding out how you can trap the king in this fashion. So definitely tier one in my mind. Second tier um, starts here with Greco's mate. And it, of course you can pause the video if you want to try these. They generally get a little bit more complex um, as we go. So the Greco's mate, I put this into category two as opposed to one, even though it includes bishop and queen. You know, queen's good, for, good at checkmating. Um, I, I kept it in the second category though because it requires some cooperation in terms of where your opponent's pieces are. So it's a little bit more rare perhaps than these other checkmates. So bishops coming in like this, we just need to check, check them on these two squares because there's a pawn in their way. So we really need to play this move. So this is your Greco's mate. Um, notice that if this pawn was not here, they would be able to run away and we'd still have to arrange a different kind of checkmate like a Damiano's bishop mate or something, something different. So this one's maybe a little bit more rare, but you know, pretty close to the first category. Within one category, the way that I ordered them is a little bit significant, but not that much. But I do think Greco's mate is very important. Okay, this one's called triangle mate because chess players are really creative and they name things the way that they see them. Um, the checkmate happens like this, and it's named as such because this is a triangle. Um, now if you ask me, everything on the chessboard is going to make a triangle if you have three of them, but you know, I can't argue with history. So this is your triangle mate, and this also depends on the placement of black's pieces, or the opponent's pieces. I made them all, almost all of them white to play just because, um, no particular reason. They could happen for either side. So these are good to know, no matter what color you like to play the most. 
So that's your triangle mate. This is called a rook mate or box mate. Very creative. We have a rook, we have to checkmate them with that, so let's call it rook mate, right? Um, this one I put into the second tier because if you have just a rook, it, a it actually takes quite a bit of technique for a starting player to get their king stuck on the edge of the board, trapped by their own king. It's a relatively difficult process to do without getting a stalemate and without letting them run away like back to the center of the board. If you're trying not to get checkmated, keeping your king close to the center is a pretty good idea. So this is a little bit hard to get, but that being said, if you know the technique, you can get this every single time if you have a rook against a king. So you can look that up if you um, are curious about how to get to this position, but the checkmate is just like back rank mate. Um, in fact, sometimes when people are like very, very fresh in chess, I'll tell them this is basically just like a, a back rank mate to help them uh, solidify. It's just that the king is making the barrier instead of black's own pieces. So that's that. Now this one is called Dovetail or Cozio's Checkmate. And uh, a lot of people don't even know it by that name because, I don't know, it's, sometimes the names of the checkmates are obscure. You know, you do the checkmate, you shake their hand, we don't care what it's called anymore, right? Um, but I still consider this to be at least a tier two checkmate because it happens very often in practice. It's often overlooked. The reason it's called dovetail mate is that um, some imaginative fellow uh, said that having two pieces fanning out from the king like this looks like a dove's tail. If you've ever uh, been really close to a dove, you could check it out, I guess. It looks like this. So we're going to check them like that, and then this, this is the dovetail perfectly in the way of their king. If they didn't have either of these pieces here so perfectly in the way, they would definitely be able to just run away, and this would not be a checkmate. But it is. Someone who's even more imaginative than that person called this the swallow's tail, or gardon mate. And um, this one is pretty similar, except a swallow has an even longer tail. So I guess because the diagonal is longer than the, the leg of a triangle, they, can, they think this looks like they're a little bit longer, more fanned out, more pointy. So this is the tail, right? These are the guys who are perfectly in the way. So the way that you get the checkmate is you stick your queen right in front. And they're really going to wish that they could take one of these rooks, or even better, castle in this situation. So this is another checkmate named after a bird that I think is common enough to warrant being ranked number two, um, but not so essential that it should be in the first tier. This one was kind of tempting to put into um, the first tier just because this is a very common situation, but um, starting players have a hard time executing it, so the, the relative difficulty of doing this is why it got ranked only in the second tier. But I think everything in first and second tier, a starting player should aspire to know um, cold, with their eyes closed. Like if their coach shakes them in the night and says, how do you do a blind swine mate? Um, they should be able to scream out the answer. So anyway, we start like this. I kept the two pawns in for a reason, just to be suggestive of how this usually happens. The two rooks are very powerful in the seventh rank. They'll usually have to go through some pawns to reach this position. This is like the real blind swine mate position. And you bring the other rook over here and finish them off. Notice that the rook is in the way. But this position happens more often than you might think because of castling, right? We castle like this, the rook goes there. So if someone castled but the, the two rooks are on their seventh rank, they could get checkmated just like that. And blind swine's a really weird name, so if you're curious about these names, Google it. Wikipedia has all the details. Wikipedia is not as bad as your teachers told you. So this one is called Epilette Mate because of yet another very imaginative person said that um, having these two pieces blocking side by side feels a lot like having epaulets, which is something you put on your shoulders. So you could search for that to see what they look like. It's very old fashioned. No one wears epaulets anymore. Um, so the checkmate is like this. And that's that. It's easy. That's your, that's your epaulet mate. Good game. Really wish you weren't wearing epaulets, don't you think? Alright, so this is the Damiano mate now. This one is still in tier 2, but I was tempted to move it into tier 3 because this usually arises from a very complex um, sequence of moves that involves sacrificing multiple pieces. But since it could happen just casually in a starting player's game because people move the pawns near their king and just let bishops hang out all the time, um, I kind of bumped it up in the ranking. So the way you do this one is just like with the scholar's mate or what have you, um, but it does depend on having some of these pieces blocking. So that's it.
I might make a video where I show examples of all of these. If you like that idea, leave it in the comment section. I will make it if you want it. Okay, so here's the next one. This is called Lolly's Mate. I consider all the mates pretty lolly, um, but this one's named after a person named Lolly. This doesn't happen that much because most people, when they see a pawn get all the way to f6, they try to take that. Um, but sometimes a pawn manages to get there and survive. Often sacrifices are involved. But the pawn is instrumental in helping deliver this checkmate. That's your lolly mate. The lolliest of the mates. Alright, this is also in tier 2. It's the last tier 2. This one is called the Max Lange mate. And it's pretty similar to the, the Damianus Bishop mate. Um, in the sense that it's a bishop and a queen, again. That's another reason I bumped it up. These are all like things that happen with a queen, right? That happens pretty often, especially at a lower level. Now here you can do this in two different ways. This is the one that's called the Max Lange mate. Um, but this is also checkmate, so you get the luxury of choice for this one. This one, maybe I should have even ranked it a little bit more lowly, because you could actually checkmate with a queen or queen and a bishop in you know, different ways. It doesn't really depend on them having these two pawns here. But when there are lots of pieces on the board, it's even more likely that you can do this, because you won't have a lot of maneuvering room to chase their king around the board. Alright, this is our first tier 3 checkmate. And as you can see, there are no queens involved. This is the Arabian mate. And the Arabian mate is one of the oldest, well, oldest documented studied checkmates. There's, a, there's an ancient document from like the, the 8th century or something uh, where they outlined this one. And it's with a knight and a rook. So this can only happen in the corner. It's good to use your imagination for these checkmates to say like, under what circumstances could I reasonably execute this? Like here, you really need them to be in the corner, right? You can't do that on the edge of the board. You would need more pieces involved. So the Arabian mate happens just like that. If I had the rook on some other line, like um, if it was down here, I could come up here and do it. It's the same thing. It's just uh, diagonally symmetrical. That's your Arabian mate. The corner mate is very similar, um, but sort of the opposite execution. This one depends on there being either a piece controlling the square in front of the king, or a piece blocking. In this case, there's a pawn blocking. The rook's doing a great job of um, cutting off the king. So we really just need to give them a check. And you need to be careful where you give the check. You have to give it here. Because if you go here, well, there are two problems. Number one, they'll take you. Number two, they could run away. So just take your time when you're about to give a check mate. So there you go. Corner mate. This one's Bowden's mate. And this one's in tier three um, because it's relatively uncommon. It usually happens after you sacrifice your queen to clear all this space near their king. And you need to have two bishops to do it. If you trade your bishops early in the game, forget about it. It's not happening. So this one goes with bishop a6. That's your two bit, your Bowden's mate. You can remember it and distinguish it from the other uh, two bishop checkmates by the crisscross pattern. Bowden's mate is with the crisscross. All right, this one's Anastasius mate. And this one is a lot like the Arabian mate and the corner mate in that it uses a knight and a rook. It also depends on your opponent having a piece in a very unfortunate situation. This one also usually happens starting with a queen sacrifice. I mean, how do you think this king got here, right? They make them put their king here, and then finish it with a rook. So the knight is building a wall, the pawn is helping, what a quizzling, and the rook is finishing it off. So that's tier three. This one's a double bishop mate. This one um, happens relatively often, I would say, but it can sometimes be tricky to, to execute. So this one you need full control of all of one color, and you also need them to not be able to block here. Like if they could put a piece right here, you will not have a checkmate. So this is your two bishops, your double bishop checkmate. Okay, this one's called the Opera Mate. Um, I think I may have misinformed people in the past that this one was called Morphe's Mate because Morphe played the opera game, but you know, it really doesn't matter what their names are. You just need to see the pattern and be inspired by it in your games. So this one's called the Opera Mate, named after the Opera Game. If you haven't seen it, look it up. I've definitely met mentioned it a bunch of times in my stream. So if you're watching any of my other videos, you might want to just like look out for it. I'll call it by name, Opera Mate. So um, in this situation, the bishop's doing a great job controlling dark squares near the king. So you just need to finish off on these squares with the rook. Another thing that's kind of good um, from these checkmate patterns is it'll it, you can use it to teach yourself to think backwards like imagine your goal and then work back to how you can get there. So 
So here you're saying I want to control these two squares. I need to put my rook there. Anyway, I put this one in the third tier, um, partly for its complexity and partly for its rarity. So this one's called the Maillet's Mate, and it's a variation on Anderson's Mate, which we will get to. So this one's with Bishop and Rook, a lot like the Opera Mate, so for similar reasons it's in Tier 3. The Bishop's helping from far away, somebody's blocking the light squares, so we put the Rook down there for the checkmate. Alright, this one's Vukovic's Mate, and this one is relatively complex, it needs three pieces, and usually it'll be the King, it could be other pieces too. Um, but at any rate, the complexity of it also makes it somewhat rare. That's true for a lot of the tier 4 and uh, lower checkmates. So for this one, the intuitive move is to check like you're doing a back rank mate, but you'll notice that the king only controls two of the squares in front of the king. They can go here. Knights are not that effective at close range for preventing the king from running out to the middle of the board. So you have to go this way. I like this one mostly just because it's cool looking. I like that. I don't know why. Can't explain it. Okay, this one's Pillsbury's Mate, and this is the first in Tier 4. Um, this one is, in my opinion, even more sophisticated than the Opera Mate, or the Maya's Mate, or what have you, any of those. So it's more complex, even though it involves a Rook and a Bishop. So for this one, the Bishop's controlling the Dark Squares again. Seems familiar. We need to control these two, though. And you have to do it in a sort of weird, maybe unintuitive way. First you give a check, that's pretty normal. But most people here would just take this rook. Now, if you take the rook and there's no pawn here, well actually no, there's, there's no stalemate chances. I was saying maybe there's some stalemate chances, but it'll definitely take a lot longer to checkmate, right? Like if we if we go in for taking the rook, it's just a waste of time. So what we do is we want to force them back here and then move our bishop so it controls the place where they came from. Because then the rook will control this one, the bishop will control this one. So you give a check, and you back it up. You can really back it up anywhere you want here. It's going to be checkmate on any of these squares. If you want to be super fancy, you can stick it in the corner. That's checkmate. And it depends a lot on the placement of Black's pieces. If their rook was like, I don't know, way over here, they could just move their king away. So that's not happening. Luckily, you'd still be winning, um, but that's another story. Okay, this one's called Morphe's Mate, and it's even more sophisticated than Pillsbury's Mate because the king's not open yet. There are two versions. There's one where the bishop's already on f6, and there's a version where the bishop's way far back. So I'm showing you the slightly more um, intricate version. The intricate version of the Morphe's Mate is also called the Concealed Morphe's Mate. And you start with the obvious move, but then here um, it's not very obvious because there is a defense if you choose unwisely. Imagine if the bishop was here on f6. Any rook move that's backwards would win the game because you'll be checking with the bishop, it's a discovered check. Um, they would not be able to go back here because the rook is still attacking that spot. But with the bishop back here, if you try that, they can block. And now there's no checkmate. You just lost it all. Not very good. So here you have to do a sophisticated maneuver to get it going. So you go here, and back, and then you do it again. Now, if you just learned about draw by repetition, you might be anxious here. You might say, wait, I just did the same moves again. They did the same moves again. Am I going to get a draw if I move my rook again? But that's not the case. This is a different position, right? There's no f-pawn anymore. So this position has repeated zero times. Now, here, you can finish the game by moving your rook back. It's different because you eliminated the only piece that can block the bishop. So now they have to block with the rook, and you can take it. Or you can flex on them some more, but I like to do a checkmate when I see it. So yeah, this one was pretty involved, right? That's why it's tier four, but it does it, it does come up pretty often. You know, you move your rook here. They're not paying attention. They don't play g six or they don't play something different that helps them. Suddenly, you have the chance to do this mate. And again, all these can happen with many pieces on the board. This one is called Anderson's mate, and this is one of the like kind of basic checkmates in terms of what pieces are on the board. But I almost never see a situation where the pawn gets all the way to the seventh rank with support, and we're going to check me with a rook on the back rank. It doesn't happen that much. Um, the Morphe's mate and these other bishop and rook mates are kind of like an extension of the same one, but they're more frequent. But this is how it works. That's your mate. That's Anderson's mate. So it's, it's actually not your mate, it's Anderson's. Okay, so here's another tier 4. This one's the smothered mate. Now you might be surprised that smothered mate is 
coming in at tier four, especially alongside you know Pillsbury's made these somewhat intricate checkmates. Um, the reason that Smothers me um, was ranked kind of low for me is that while it does happen relatively frequently, um, it's a little bit difficult to execute, and um, I guess that's that's kind of the whole thing. It's just difficult to execute, and it, I guess it's really not that common either compared to the checkmates with multiple pieces. Usually, you have to sacrifice something to get here. Sometimes multiple somethings, but this is the this is how the final works, right? They're trapped by the rook, probably because they just captured a queen or something on that square, and then we finish it off when they're stuck. It, it happens a lot in my games, but I feel like it doesn't happen that that much overall. Like I haven't seen a lot of students um, doing a smothered mate or having a chance for a smothered mate. It's very easy to mess up. In fact, um, one reason that I ranked it kind of in the fourth tier as opposed to like third or second is because I've seen a lot of people get excited where they'll have like a queen over here and they'll put it here assuming that a rook far away will take it but then after the king takes they have to resign because they just lost their queen for absolutely nothing. So it is tricky to execute for our starting players. Okay this one's called the suffocation mate. I rank this one for even though it's relatively simple just because it doesn't happen that much. I almost never see it. Um, I've seen it arise from a very complicated sequence, but generally no. This will be the finale of a combination pretty often. And it's, it's aptly called Suffocation Mate because of how the king can't go anywhere, but you know what, we could call like, any checkmate Suffocation Mate for that reason. So here it is, 97. This one's called Hook Mate, and for once I am not objecting to the creative name. When you play the winning move here, it does look kind of like a hook. You go here. And this is your hooky looking pattern higher. So the king's stuck here. And this one, I ranked it in the fourth tier because it's pretty rare. I almost never see it. Now this one is anomalous in my ranking system. This is a pawn mate, and I ranked it in the fifth tier. This is our highest in the fifth tier. The reason I ranked it um, in such a poor category is because generally the pawn mate is something that will have will happen when you're just like flexing on your opponent. Very often you need a dominant position to use this because your pawns start on the second rank and usually to do it you need their king to come all the way to your side which probably means you're dominating the position anyway and you can check me in various ways. It's pretty rare that you are forced to check me with just a pawn. Um, that being said it's pretty convenient when it does happen so that's why it's not in the sixth category. So a3 is the checkmate here. Don't be grabby, don't take the knight, checkmate, that's what we like. Notice that the rook is helping. Pawns can't checkmate by themselves, so it can also be relatively complex. If the pawn mate is the only way to get it going, you probably had to see it from far away. Alright, now this one's called Ready's Mate, and this one is in, in fifth tier because of its rarity alone. Um, it's relatively simple in terms of the pieces on the board, um, but it just doesn't happen very frequently. I'm sorry, my mouse did a thing. There we go. So this is your checkmate. I like it though, aesthetically, because it's kind of cool that it's like controlling squares in a backwards way. Usually we think of attacking as forward chess, but this is backwards chess. And I like it when things are kind of weird. So, fifth tier, just because it's rare, but I, I do like this one a lot. Okay, this one is called Legal's Mate. That last one was Ready's Mate. This is Legal's. So if you're ready for Legal's, let's go. Um... They can't move that much because their pieces are all around, so this is a pretty specific one in terms of your opponent um, cooperating with you. We start with a check, because why not? And then we check with the knight. So the reason I like this one is that it can happen in as few as like seven moves, so this can happen pretty early in the game. The downside is that that's pretty much the only way it can happen. right? You can imagine the position where you have all of your pieces lined up, they haven't developed very much. For some reason, they let you keep your knight here on e5, and then check, checkmate happens like this. It's pretty hard to, to pull this off, where none of their pieces are attacking any of the important squares for the checkmate, um, where they can't block anything. It's, it's just, it's pretty rare that they can't move their king as well. In fact, if this pawn wasn't on d6, they could run away if they wanted to. So, it's very, very hard to get, even though it's relatively simple in conception. 
Well, I guess if you're a starting player, it's not simple because you're going to have to use several minor pieces, and usually this arises after a queen sacrifice. So that's why it's fifth tier. Kind of complicated, kind of rare, um, not that useful, but it, it is pretty cool. This one um, is the last in the fifth tier because it is so rare and relatively difficult. But when it does arise, it is the only way to win. So the hard part is getting to this position where you have to corral the king into the corner. It doesn't matter which corner because we have one bishop of each color. Um, but we have to corral the king, and the corralling process can be hard because it can involve waste moves. So if you're interested in, in that, you should look up how to check me with two bishops. I've also talked about it in some of my um, educative videos here. But the finale here is like that. So the bishop controls one, the other bishop controls two, and the king builds a little wall. So that's your two bishop mate. Ranked in fifth category because it is very rare and very difficult. Bishop and knight um, got into the sixth tier, and this is our final tier. And this is because not only is it difficult, um, it's also very, very rare. So um, I've had to do this in practice before, like in tournaments, and it can be a pain if the king's not already cornered. The way that we do it is like that. Looks simple right now, but like imagine how they got here, right? We somehow had to force them to come from here to here, which means we had to have played this move, right? We had to play knight a6. Now, if we played knight a6, they had to be not able to go here, which is why the bishop was here. So that means that they had just played this move, which is, you know, pretty major. And we had to have some situation before that where they were forced to go from e8 over here. So making them play all these moves in a row to get into the perfect checkmating position is hard. That's why it's in the sixth tier. This one happens, I think I saw an estimate somewhere of like 1 in 40,000 games or something like that. Very rare. And the other ones in the sixth tier, um, I mostly put them here because they're not very useful and, or not very common. This one, not that useful, also not that common. But it does happen, so you gotta pay attention. We give a check. Our double knight mate happens with knight c7. And it depends a lot on them being blocked, of course. Now the Blackburn's mate is one that could happen at any point in the game, so that's kind of nice for it, but I've almost never seen it in practice. That's why I rank this one so low. Um, I always mention it to people because it's really cool. I mean, like, look at that. It's cool. It's like two bishops plus a knight. It's sort of like the Legal's mate in that respect. Um, downside is it basically never happens. And it's somewhat complex. All these pieces cooperating, them being blocked, tricky. Now this one I put in dead last. Even though it is technically a checkmate, this is called a two-knight checkmate. Because this does not arise by force, ever, unless you have more pieces involved. You could sacrifice a piece to make them go here, in which case you're probably winning really badly anyway. Um, but imagine their last move, right? Um, well, actually, I set up a bad example because they don't have a legal previous move. Like, if they were here, they would have been in check twice. So that means that their second to last move was illegal. But, you know, if we pretend that um, this knight was on e5, right, this this would be a possible position. Their king would have been on g8. Um, we would have given them a check. And for some weird reason, they play king h8. If they play king f8, there's no way that you can force a checkmate. So if you're not convinced, try it out against a determined opponent. Um, you will not be able to force a checkmate with two knights. They have to cooperate by going to the corner. And since most people, even by fat chance, might just go to f8, I consider this one probably the m most useless of the name checkmates. But it's still pretty nifty when it does happen. Um, there is one situation where this happens um, somewhat often. Um, actually, this is probably even more rare than the, the bishop and knight checkmate. There's a situation where if your opponent has one pawn, like here black would have a pawn somewhere like here, and it's going down the board, and... The only thing stopping from becoming a queen is your knight in the way, and so you release the pawn in a timely fashion in order to... It would be farther down than this. I think it would be like right here. So you would release the... I'm going to make it a different color. So you'd release the pawn in a, a timely fashion, allowing them to almost become a queen, so that you can get this extra move in to give a checkmate to a king who's already trapped by this knight. So that, that's pretty rare. Um, but it's still good to know, because there are situations where you have to employ this pattern. It will just involve more pieces. Okay, so that's my tier list. That was all the checkmates that I wanted to look at today. 
And uh, that's pretty much all the name checkmates. If you want to know more about their history, just go look at it on Wikipedia or leave a message in the chat. If you can't find what you're looking for regarding these, like if, you're, if you want examples or whatever, just leave a message in the comment section. So I hope you like this video and um, take care. See you next time, hopefully on a live stream.